Well, there are a number of things, I think, that are, are barriers to seeing this thing through. Uh, it's unclear how many people are, are in the so-called SUPAC block. Block. Block, yeah. Um, it's also unclear um, with the tax on benefits. I mean, that was far and away the biggest issue of the House. Mm -hmm. And what they've done is, is significantly extend the timeline for phasing that in and the cap on the level. Um, but for a lot of us, we really just don't think it's the right thing to do. Um, and therefore, that's, that's a significant barrier. Uh, I think the issue of prescription drugs has been a major issue for the People's House. And uh, the House of Lords has not been so uh, eager to. Uh, to take some of that on. Um, the affordability credits for the middle class are a major issue. Um, so we're a long way from 218 in the House, or I guess it's 216 now because of all the retirements. Um, and even with the Senate, I think there are a lot of process questions. So to be in the weeds about it for a second, um, we're, we, I don't think we are yet, um, uh, it's yet clear exactly what the Senate plan is that would make us believe when they haven't acted on 290 bills and when it took them a week to get Senator Bunning under control, uh, that we should simply uh, assume that they're going to take care of what are some very substantial fixes uh, in the bill. For me, one of the biggest game changers in the bill is a federal exchange. Now, I supported one with a public option, but even without a public option, if you have a federal exchange, um, you're talking about the economies of scale, the efficiency gains. That's one of the things the hospitals are most excited about. Um, and essentially you're moving in the direction of interstate competition, but not in a race to the bottom way that, that some on the other side would want, in a truly competitive uh, expanding risk pools and expanding competition way, which is the right way to do it. Um, the Senate versions of sort of virtual state exchanges, to me, it's hard for me to see those as game changers. Um, whether you're talking about any of these bills, you're never going to get a perfect bill. The issue is whether you're getting a bill that's strong enough that it changes the incentives to move in the right direction then you can match those up or down. With cap and trade, as you've noted yourself, there are a lot of giveaways to the utilities and the coal companies. There is a slow timeline, but I believe it's one of the most transformative bills ever written because it sends the signal on a 50 to 100 year scale that we're moving towards a carbon constrained environment. That's going to mean that where the investments are going, where the job creation is, is going to be defined by the knowledge that we're moving in that direction. That's the game changer. And the fact that you're going to be able to make a profit by being the first one to crack that technology uh, is the kind of incentive that drives it. With the health insurance market, to me, the federal exchange is really crucial in that. So I don't know the votes on abortion. Uh, I think most you know, uh, people in the, the Choice for Women's movement feel like uh, Nelson and Stupak are both a disaster. So the question is, how much of a fight is that uh, really going to be uh, from the life perspective? You know, they have a Catholic church that basically wants health care reform to pass, and most of the other life movement either doesn't care or, or doesn't want it for theological reasons that astound me. Um, but, uh, you know, so that, that is one issue. But I think there's a process question first and foremost, which is, you know, why are we, why should we be convinced that the Senate uh, is actually going to do some of these fixes? And, and first among those is certainly the, the tax on benefits. Mm -hmm. Thank you very, very much.